It's Power Back Time on the Gutsy Podcast. Each episode brings you five minutes of condensed inspiration to reclaim the courage and momentum you've unintentionally given away. You've got big things to do, so let's get your power back. Welcome back to this week's Power Back episode. Today, we are talking about your tendencies. You want to talk about doing the work, the inner work, the spiritual work, the stuff that really makes a big lasting difference in the way that you show up in the world and the way that you react or respond to things. My friends, if you get to know your tendencies today along with me, you can really truly start to shift the narrative and the outcome of your life, of your business, of your efforts, of your energy. So today, you're going to get to know yourself a little bit better. This is real raw shit here. You know how I roll. And we're going to get to know your tendencies, how to recognize them, and how to shift them. Because when you get to know your own personal flavor of bullshit, you take your power back and you start to see and feel the changes that you've been searching for. Before we go down the beautiful rabbit hole of tendencies, I want to remind you that the Mindfuckery class is not that far away. In fact, registration closes a week from today. This is a five-day workshop. We're going to be doing this alongside one another. I'm going to teach for 20, 25 minutes, and then we're going to workshop together as a collective. The first day, we're going to talk about understanding your mind. We must first know what we're working with to make changes. Day two, we're going to talk about getting out of your own way, talking about uncovering beliefs, recognizing tendencies, which might sound familiar from today's episode. Day three, we're going to talk about reconnecting with yourself, getting back in touch with who you are, what you actually want, and how to move forward. Day four, we're going to talk about building your confidence. Look, confidence is such a powerful tool, and it always starts and resides from within. And then on day five, we're going to wrap it all up with a beautiful bow of learning the power back process, how to shift your thoughts in the moment so that you stay in the driver's seat instead of your mind and your subconscious taking you on a wild goose chase. So again, registration is open for another week. It closes on the 20th, 21st, I believe. And you can register by going to lauraora.com forward slash learn. One of the things that we're covering in class that I'm gonna touch a little bit on today is understanding your tendencies. Understanding your tendencies is a key part in shifting your thoughts, your beliefs, your reality, and the way that you handle things. So what is a tendency first and foremost? Let's make sure we're setting the playing field even here. Tendencies are nothing more than your go-to actions or your go-to thoughts when you're feeling or expressing a big emotion. It's kind of your go-to activity when you feel stuck, or confused, when you're overwhelmed, when you're not sure what to do next. Maybe it's when something feels scary or really big or brand new. Based off of old conditioning, based off of subconscious beliefs, based off of previous experiences, we have formed internal thoughts and feelings about certain kinds of things. And when those things come to the surface or we're presented with a similar situation, We kind of all have our own version of tendencies, the things that we tend to do when that is happening. The reason that understanding these are so absolutely essential and critical to the shift of you aligning with your higher self, of having the success that you're craving, of having the peace, the inner fulfillment, whatever goal that you have is, if we don't recognize our tendencies, we stay in the same cycle and continue to get the same results. Tendencies are one of the things that are keeping you stuck. A really kind of Laura Aura-ish kind of way of looking at this is I see our tendencies as kind of our own personal flavor of bullshit. Because tendencies are often these kind of quiet, subtle things. They're not always loud. People can't always recognize that we're doing things. But it's kind of this safety net. Something that makes us feel like we're more protected, we are more in control, we have our hands wrapped around things, right? This is all perception. This is all of our mind, uh, mostly our subconscious being like, I am a little bit freaked out right now. And I know how to fix this. 
I'm going to choose one of my handy dandy tendencies and that's how we will fix it. And don't you worry, I will be sharing my own personal flavor of bullshit today with you so that you have some context as to what these things are, an example of what they could be, and how they show up. But first, and in just a general context, here are some generalized tendencies, and I'm curious if any of these ring true for you. So when we're, again, we're talking about having the big feeling, the big situation, something's going on that's making our mind and our body and our nervous system go, this is where we need to pick up one of our items. For instance, if you feel overwhelmed, your tendency may be to shut down. If you feel excited, you may be prone and have a tendency to overcommit. See, tendencies are always not always uh, equated to negative emotions. They can be tied to positive ones as well. A, kind of a good example of that is when you go to a concert and you know you're like on that concert high and you're like, if this were a normal Tuesday, would I spend $75 on a sweatshirt? Absolutely not. But since I'm here, I'm in the moment, I'm in the zone, I'm riding the high of this, I am excited, now I'm going to overcommit. Do you want this sweatshirt for $75? You're fucking right, I do. I would also like that sticker and maybe even the cup as well. Now, I'm not saying buying those things is a bad thing if that's what fills your cup, do it. But just as an example of how a tendency can show up even in positive situations. If you are unclear, meaning you lack clarity, you're not really sure what to do next, you might have a tendency of procrastination. I'm confused, I don't know what to do, so therefore I will just do nothing. This is a big one. You have to DM me if this one rings true for you. When you recognize that you need help, you isolate. Mm. That is quite a tendency that I see very, very often. You need help with something. You're, you've got a lot going on. There's a lot of irons in the fire and you're like, you know what? I could really use some help right now. I'm going to disappear from everybody on the planet. If you're feeling worried, you might fall into an area of judgment and or the comparison game. Or maybe you're saving money and waiting to do something and your tendency is to overspend, which unintentionally ends up sabotaging your goal. You can see where we're going with this, right? Something is happening. Our bodies and our minds are saying, I'm a little bit weirded out right now. And the tendencies are like, I am here to save the day. The problem with this is these tendencies are often the opposite of what we actually need. They're the hiding mechanisms. They're the retractment. They are the closed up. They are the pulling away from things or to the whole other extreme are the extremes of overspending, overdoing, overcommitting. So by getting in touch with what your tendencies are, you can start to see them show up before you fall into the trap. Or let's say you do fall into one of your tendencies. Okay, we're not here to judge. We're not here to shame. We're here to shift. And so if you find yourself in a tendency, you can say, oh, there it is again. Now I have better understanding of how this is affecting me. And you know what? Next time I can choose better. Now I have more tools in my tool belt. Now I have more knowledge. Now I have more perspective. Because recognizing and shifting your tendencies is not about perfecting these things. No, it's about being better equipped to see them come or shift them faster so that you can stay on your aligned journey and achieve the things that you're going for. So I've got an exercise that is very helpful to start to recognize and shift your tendencies. And first, I'm gonna go through this and, and show you how it looks and sounds in use with my own one of my own personal tendencies. So the formula is basically, when I am feeling blank, I tend to blank when really I need blank. Again, I'll be digging in and there's actually going to be um, like a, a workbook card for you to use in the Mindfuckery workshop. So you'll be able to go through and like fill this out and have a quick reference card. But for now, we'll go through this together. So for me, when I am feeling overwhelmed, that is an ongoing emotion and experience that tends to show up in my life. When I am feeling overwhelmed, I tend to shut down. I tend to scroll mindlessly for copious amounts of hours. I tend to take frantic action. 
See, what's happening in my subconscious is I'm trying to fix things. When I'm feeling overwhelmed and there's a lot going on and I'm like, ah, I don't know what to do next. I'm not feeling clear. Like everything, everything's due. Everything is on fire. My subconscious is like, well, then we got to fix this. And the two ways that I tend to fix it is either to completely shut down and do none of it or go into frantic action and do a thousand things at one time. I like to call this playing a professional game whack-a-mole, you know, like where I think that I'm mastering um, multitasking or, you know, I feel like I'm being accomplished because I'm like doing all this stuff and I'm bebopping around and I'm like zipping around. It's exhausting. Instead, where I get the power to reconnect and shift, what I really need is to pause. What I really need is to make a list and prioritize. What I really need is to ask for help. And there's, there's the power, my friends. You see how by recognizing my tendency, I can now recognize what it is that I actually need. What is going to help support me in this moment? And how that action instead is the thing that's going to move you forward, that's going to break the cycle, that's going to break the habit. So let's walk through this a little bit together. If you are in a place where you can jot some stuff down, this is a great place to do that. So on your notebook, you can write down, when I'm feeling blank, I tend to blank when what I really need is blank. We're gonna use this as essentially the framework to start to build awareness around your tendencies. Because you hear me say it all the time, If we are not aware of the things that are happening, we cannot shift them. So the first blank, when I'm feeling blank, this is a big emotion. This is a particular type of situation. This is something that tends to trigger this uh, response in you. And so again, some examples might be overwhelmed, unclear, worried, overthinking. Perhaps it's a money situation. Fill in the blank. What What is the big thing? You can, and I would recommend that you do this for as many as you need to, right? Because we all have several tendencies based off of different types of situations. For now, today, for the sake of today, and let's choose one. Once you have identified the, the big marker, then the next spot is I tend to, and this, my friend, is where you get really honest about your own personal flavor of bullshit. Again, though, I want to reiterate that this is not about shaming yourself. This is not about judging yourself. This is not about like, oh, I can't believe I do this. No, we're not doing any of that, okay? We are simply bringing awareness because that is where you take your power back. So a good way to look at this is what is your go-to? When you're feeling or experiencing that first item, what is your go-to activity, feeling, or thought? Some examples might be to disconnect, in my case, to scroll, to get super quiet. This is always kind of one for me too, like, because I'm usually a pretty communicative person. So when I disconnect and I get super quiet, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes that means that I'm like, that's a tendency. I'm, I'm backing out. Some other ones might be to start gossiping, to start comparing, to overeat, to overspend, to overcommit. What is your go-to thought or activity when this arises. And then lastly, when what I really need is, this is establishing and identifying the new healthier habit. And if you don't know what that is yet, that's okay. This is a chance for you to work out some options for you to try the next time this happens. These are things that would be more helpful and more useful. An activity, a thought, or a belief that is going to be in alignment with who you are and the mission that you're creating. This is a healthier go-to. While it may not always be comfortable at first, this is a new healthier option for you. And this is a thing that's going to help you move forward. So instead of staying stuck, instead of retreating, instead of going to, you know, old habits that don't serve you anymore, this is the thing, the pivotal moment where you get to choose to respond versus react. So what are those things for you? What are some options that you could try the next time that this happens instead? The important part about this third portion of this little exercise is it's a reminder of what is accessible to you. 
Because more often than not, in that moment, when your brain takes over, your, your energy or your emotions are high, it's like all of a sudden your brain gets wiped clean and you forget about all of the different great things that help support you. So by having kind of this quick sheet reference guide for yourself, for your life, You can say, you know what, I don't know what to do right now, but you know what, I got this fucking piece of paper that I wrote down in Laura's Power Back episode. My final nugget here is a reminder that these things only work if you do them. So you can be aware of your tendencies all day long, but if you choose not to change them, then you're choosing to stay in the pattern. And when you stay in the pattern, you get the same results. And when you get the same results, you have the same feelings. What we're trying to do here is break the pattern and create new, healthier patterns that support your higher self, that support the version of you that is incredibly fucking smart, that has a big mission to fulfill or a new idea to go after, the version of you that sets an incredible example for the people around you, that takes care of herself first, that says, you know what, even when things aren't going the greatest, I have tools to help and support myself. These thoughts, these beliefs, these tendencies, they're no longer going to rule my life. In fact, I am so committed to the change to really achieve the goals that I keep thinking about that I'm willing to get temporarily uncomfortable to try new things to get there. And my hopes too for you today are that I have also planted a seed in you. That the next time a tendency pops up, maybe you wouldn't have recognized that it was a tendency before, but the next time you're going to be like, holy shit balls, that's a fucking tendency. And when you can notice it and kind of make light of it and be like, you know, okay, I get it. I get it now. That my friend is where you start to fucking change everything. Again, I will be teaching on this even further live in a group, a chance for you to ask questions, to build out this workbook together as a collective in the Mindfuckery workshop. So that workshop closes for registration a week from today and class runs from July 24th through the 28th, an hour together every single day to shift your mindset, to get out of your head so that you can get clarity start to make progress, and feel good while you're doing it. Register for class at lauraora.com forward slash learn, and I will see you very soon. Next Tuesday's episode of the Gutsy Podcast, episode 169, is about running a profitable, sustainable business with Angie Knoll. We're talking about accounting, but in very like you and I type of terms. And we're learning about building profitable businesses, ones that not only just generate funds and pay the bills, but ones where you can look at the bank account and look at your assets and say, you know what, this is, this is profitable. I have room to grow and I can do things in my life and in my business because of it. In the meantime, connect with me on social media. I play the most on TikTok, but you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook using at that Laura Aura. And as always, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.